Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, some debugging features. Specifically, I want to program in five factorial. That exclamation mark you see there is a math symbol, it means a factorial. And five factorial means we'll take one times two times three times four times five. Uh, 20, 60, 120, I believe. So that's our goal. Okay. We'll put it behind this button here. So I'm going to double click that. And I'm going to uh, declare a variable fact as an integer. And then I'll say uh, for x equals 1 to fact plus 1. And um, then I'll say fact is equal to fact times x. Now, um, when it pops up, pops up with this uh, window, which we'll talk more about in another video. I did escape to get that to disappear. Then down here, I'm going to say message box fact. And um, actually, I didn't want message box. I want MS box, sorry. Miss box. Okay, so here's my code. First off, notice that this has got a red squiggly underneath it. That tells us that we um, have an error there. So when you're writing code and you see the squiggly appear, then that means that there's a, a problem. And if you put your mouse over it, it may show, you can choose show potential fixes, and that may be useful. It says, okay, look at that, or change MS box to message box. Well, message box is what I wanted. Uh, so you could click that and have it change that, and then it goes away. Okay, now those are the obvious, obvious errors. Now, if I run this, and that click button one, comes up with zero. Well, that's no good. It's supposed to be 120. So what in the world's going on, on here? I got actually a couple, a couple of issues I put in here. Now, um, message boxes are nice. I could put a message box here, and then I could type in fact, and that would show me the value of fact as we go along. So if I uh, click start, click that, and zero, zero, zero. Actually, I guess that was it. Or did I? Oh, well, here it is. Okay, so what in the world's going on with this? Well, um, you can. Over here in this uh, gray area, if that's me, that's gray, you can click um, one time, puts a little red circle. That's a breakpoint. So now, see under debug here, we're actually choosing start debugging by default. So when you choose this option that starts debugging, if I click this button, it pops out here, and um, it's on this line of code here, and I can put my mouse over these uh, values, and that says x is zero, okay. It says fact is zero. Wait a minute, I don't want fact to be zero. I want that to be equal to a, a certain value. So this is going from one to zero plus one. Okay, now I can click this, um, this, this square up here to stop debugging. And now let's rethink this. Okay, I really want this to go from 1 to 3, don't I? Uh, actually, let me put 4 here. Actually, I'll put 3. Um, because this will show the debugging now as we go along. Okay, so now let's try to run it. Now, I can get rid of this breakpoint if I don't want that pop up each time. Uh, if I just click it again, that'll remove it. Now, if I click Start... Okay, click that button. It says zero, 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 zero. What in the world's going on? Okay, let's come back here, put our breakpoint back, and click start again. Okay, click the button here, pops up here, and put my mouse over X. X is currently zero. That's fine. Now, under debug, there's different options here. The, the one you're probably going to use the most is the one that says step into, F11. 
So I want to choose this each time. I'll just keep doing F11. What that does is runs that line of code and goes to the next one. Now, if I put my mouse over X, it says X is equal to 1. Okay, it should be, because we're going from 1 to 3. Now, if I put my mouse over fact, it says fact is 0. So here I got 0 times 1. Well, 0 times 1 is 0, and that would put it into fact. Well, that makes sense then why that's equal to 0. If I do F11, comes down here, this fact is still 0. If I do F11 again, it'll pop up with that window. I'll click OK. I'm uh, down here at the next now. You can see a little arrow to indicate where it's at. F11 comes back here. Um, if I put my mouse over X, it says X is now 2. Fact is still 0. And then if I put my mouse over the X, is 2. 0 times 2 is 0. Okay, well, 0 times 2 is going to be 0 again. Okay, so I'm starting to see the problem here. Now let me uh, stop the debugging. Get rid of that breakpoint. And um, what I really need to do is for this code is set fact equal to one. And actually, uh, my example of it, I think I had five, didn't I? Okay. So let's run this now. Click my button one. It says one, two, th six, twenty-four, hundred and twenty. Okay, that's looking better now. Uh, I want to get rid of this message box. Now if I run it, click the button, comes back, tells me my answer is 120. So it's working now. Uh, this is invaluable. When you start working with a program and you can't figure out what's going on with it, just looking at the code, you could look for hours and not see, uh, see an issue. But by putting those breakpoints in, you can you can track what's happening with each one of those uh, those variables. Now there's lots of other options available with debug. You can see, um, you know these are these are some of your different options available. Um, got breakpoints. You know the, what can you do with a breakpoint? We're not going to go into a lot of depth on that. Um, I'm showing you just the very basics so when you're learning visual basic programming for the first time then you can use those to your advantage as you get more into uh, programming if you do program visual basic in a, for a particular company well, then you want to explore it a little bit more you want to be more productive um, for this uh, I could overwhelm you with everything that uh, that uh, visual basic uh, does visual studio I should say um, but that's not my goal. My goal here is just to teach you some of the very basics. Now, um, one other option that I'll mention is if I have uh, some code and um, you have different different items here. Here's the one. I always have to put my mouse over. Comment, uh, comment out to selected code. I can click that and that'll comment it for me. And you see this one says uncomment to selected lines. You might say, well, what, what benefit is that? How hard was it to simply type a um, single quote there? It wasn't very hard, I agree. But let's pretend you have 100 lines of code you want to comment out. You can highlight them, click out this uh, comment out to selected line, and it'll comment out all of those. And then you can, um, again, you highlight it to, and click this button to uncomment them. That's a useful uh, tool for debugging. If you get into a lengthy uh, program and you just want to test just a little bit of it, you don't want it to actually run uh, another portion of the code. You can comment out those 100 lines and then it'll go directly down to the part you want to run. Uh, errors. Uh, let's see if I can force an error. Mm, that might not look too bad. Let me try to run that. Uh, run that. Still get 120. <laughs> um, what's this telling us? Quick actions. Convert to binary. Um, let's try that. Any other day, I could get an error right and left, and, and not have a have an issue. Um, okay, well, I just force a force a error. 
Okay, so uh, fact is equal to fact divided by zero. Okay, so I run this this bit of code here. It says 120, and then it um. I would have expected it to broke that on that. Any other day, I'd have a hundred errors I could show you. Well, um, maybe because I got this a string. Let's try that. There we go. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, sometimes you see you got a issue that occurs when you go to run it, and it pops up here, and you can see the error message. Uh, this says uh, your uh, operation uh, gave you an overflow. Well, what in the world does that mean? That means you have a problem in your code. You know, you can sit there and um, analyze this in depth, but um, mainly that helps you to identify which line of code you need to go and fix. The um, sometimes you'll see errors down here when you go to go to compile it when you go to um, build it. Uh, since I had so much trouble getting that error to pop up, then I probably wouldn't be able to <laughs> get one to appear down here. But sometimes you'll see an error down here, so you need to read this close and see exactly any errors that um, might be represented. Here's one right here, the one we just uh, had. Uh, it says we had a overflow exception occurred. Okay, now that's um, just the very basics of uh, debugging and some of the error error handling that occurs with that. Um, the debugging tool, the breakpoints, is nice. Message boxes are quick and dirty. You can put those in real fast and just check something. I much prefer having a message box if I know it's going to occur one time versus uh, doing a doing a trace, you know, tracing through the code. 